So for those of you who build personal computers, a question probably arises around the time that you decide to purchase your CPU. Hmm, should I air cool it or water cool it? Now, both of these have their own respective advantages and disadvantages, but I'm not going to bother listing those in this video because you probably already are aware of most of them, and I, I frankly, I'm not willing to argue for either side in this case or act like I'm in the middle. I only care about price to performance in this video, and that is what we are going to investigate. So our test bench is pretty much the same as it's always been. We have an i5-4690K paired with an ASRock Z97 Extreme 4 LJ1150 motherboard and 8GB and two 4GB variants of Kingston HyperX DDR3 clocked at 1866MHz. <sighs> now a lot of you have been asking me why I keep choosing Haswell-based CPUs to run these tests. Now Skylake is out, obviously, and you guys keep telling me, oh, do Skylake builds, those are better, you know, they're better than Haswell. Yeah, they're better by a little bit. You guys put too much emphasis on DDR4 and whatnot. There really is not much of a difference at all in terms of your performance increase with DDR4 versus DDR3, especially in gaming. However, the price to performance ratio with Haswell-based CPUs at this point, in my personal opinion, is much better than those from the Skylake counterparts. I think it's proper to talk about price to performance because this is a video about price to performance. And for my viewers who are not in the United States, including those of you in Germany, England, Australia, parts of Asia, all of you who I appreciate very much have told me that Skylake is still very expensive where you live and that Haswell is just the more affordable option. So. As well it is, sorry. Eventually we'll move to Skylake permanently, but for now I'm gonna intermingle between the two. A 6600K, however, is on the way, should be here by Thursday, so expect a build featuring that processor. So we performed three instances of the exact same test, only changing the cooler in all three scenarios. The first cooler that we used was a stock Intel cooler that was included with the 4690K. As this cooler was included with the CPU purchase, we regarded the cooler as free and used it as our baseline to compare our other two coolers with. Speaking of which, our second cooler is the Cooler Master Hyper T4, which costs us $25, and our third all-in-one water cooler was the Corsair H90, which cost us $60. I have links to both of those coolers in the description below. I believe that the H90 cooler went up in price since the time that I bought it, but I'm not going to change the price of the cooler for the sake of this video because when I bought it, it was $60, and therefore that's the price that I'll use. Sorry, I know prices change all the time, but 60 bucks. So $60, $25, and free. Those are our three different coolers that we use to run these tests, and these are the results that we obtained. Now obviously, the liquid cooler gave us better results. We achieved higher frame rates in Grand Theft Auto V, and also a higher CP score in Cinebench R15. But, at the cost of spending more than double the amount of money on the Corsair H90 over the Hyper T4. Okay, so let me try to quantify this a bit more for you. Just in terms of price ratios, our Corsair H90 cost $60 and our Hyper T4 cost $25. 60 over 25 yields 2.4, which means that it literally costs 2.4 times as much money to purchase the H90 over the T4. Now in terms of just a performance ratio, our Corsair H90 allowed us to achieve a performance increase of 6.426%, whereas our air-cooled Hyper T4 only allowed us to achieve a percentage increase of 3.718% overall. Now this is the point you have to catch. It costs a little over double the amount of money to purchase the water-cooled unit, however we're only receiving a little under double the performance increase using the water-cooled unit over the air-cooled unit. So you're paying more than twice as much money for a system that's not even giving you twice as much performance. And that's why the air-cooled unit is actually the better price to performance performer. So no, I'm not bashing water coolers in any way, in fact my most recent builds have all featured water coolers, however, in the case of strictly price to performance, this particular air cooler, the Cooler Master Hyper T4, does reign supreme over the Corsair H90. 
So yeah, you can take whatever you want from that. I mean, some people are still gonna buy water coolers just because of the fact that they might look cooler or they're quieter. There are many, many other factors to consider here, including the fact that air coolers are generally a bit louder and bulkier, which could affect RAM clearance. However, on the water cooler side of things, it's a bit sketchier. You could have a pipe leak or you could have a pump just stop working altogether in the middle of a game. Then you could overheat your CPU or just completely soak your motherboard. Yeah, it's definitely riskier and it is more expensive, but you are going to be able to squeeze out a bit more performance in games and CPU synthetics, rendering and things of that sort. So let me know in the comments below what you're sporting in your rig. Let me know if you're satisfied or dissatisfied with whatever you're cooling your CPU with and what you plan to upgrade to in the near future. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and if you did dislike it, let me know in the comments. I can take constructive criticism, just don't be weird. Just say weird things. It's just, it's just weird. Also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because we do cool things like this all the time on the channel, right? Yeah. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.